Since adding a new star in Russell Westbrook, the Lakers' winning ambitions have been far from what they anticipated. Between injury, lack of fit, and a multitude of other reasons, the team just hasn't been able to dominate as we've seen in the past. But for the most part, all of the blame for the Lakers' bad season is falling on the shoulders of one person and one person only. You guessed it, I'm talking about Russell Westbrook. Today we have to talk Los Angeles Lakers, in particular, taking a look at why this team's failure isn't really Westbrook's fault, the actual problems with this Lakers team, and how Draymond Green just called out this team and their issues. But before we get into that, I have to tell you about the sponsor of this video, the like button. See, if you guys just hit that like button on this video and subscribe to the channel, I could go full time and make videos just like this every single day. So go ahead and do that if you want some more content. But with that being said, let's get into the Lakers. Looking back on this team's offseason, I just can't help but feel that they literally made the worst possible choice. I mean, there were rumors of this team getting a potential DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry reunion in LA. Not to mention, this team could have gotten Buddy Heal but instead, all they got was Russell Westbrook. At the time of this big trade, it was clear what the Lakers were trying to do, get anything that can help them win now no matter how old they are, and go all in for a run at the championship this year. At the time, this made a lot of sense, because well, roster additions such as Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, and other similar names sounded good at the time, especially for vet minimum deals. But now, it seems as though the Lakers made a big mistake, and well, they might not be able to fix it. The Lakers at this point in time are old, slow, and injured, which if you ask me, is not a good equation for success, especially in the postseason. Despite all the issues surrounding this team though, the blame continues to fall under two people within the Lakers organization, newly acquired star Russell Westbrook and head coach Frank Vogel. Sure, Westbrook hasn't been good, and Vogel has thrown out some strange lineups throughout the season, but there are issues with the Lakers that go way deeper than these two guys. And that's exactly what Draymond Green called out on his last show. A few days ago, Draymond Green talked about the issues of this Lakers team. Team, but unlike most casual fans, he didn't put the blame on Russ. Draymond defended Russ throughout his entire discussion and said that he can't just be the one to blame for losing this much, which I believe is 100% true. Since their championship run, anytime the Lakers have something go wrong, it seems as though they throw the blame on the easiest thing instead of actually acknowledging the real problem at hand. Now you might be thinking, what are the Lakers issues that are bigger than Russ and Vogel? Well, the list of issues is a lot bigger than most people would think, so I'm just going to cover the three main issues of this team, how they can fix them, and what Draymond Green had to say about them from the perspective of a current NBA player. Starting off with one of the more not talked about issues or mistakes, we have the Lakers 2021 offseason. As mentioned, this team had the chance to get some notable names, but instead went with the Westbrook trade, knowing that it would be a questionable fit at best. I mean, this team had a legitimate chance at snagging both Kyle Lowry and Amar DeRozan, but they went for the big name instead of what would fit best for this team. But even though the big free agents that the Lakers missed out on are the main topic of discussion, I feel like people are quick to forget that this Lakers team also lost some of their best role players this offseason. In particular, I'm talking about Alex Caruso. It is no secret that Alex Caruso is one of the better defending guards in the entire league, and to put it simply, the man is a hustle player. Despite this, the Lakers lowballed Caruso with his new contract by nearly half of what the other teams such as the Bulls offered. Keep in mind that the Lakers were well above the luxury tax, so offering Caruso a $17 million deal would also mean they have to pay $20 million in taxes, but in itself, that shows the team's big issue. With LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook taking up nearly all the cap space of this team, the Lakers don't have much wiggle room to sign players like Caruso, and the team knew that this would be the case when they made a move for Brody, but they did it anyways. Missing out on players isn't where the Lakers offseason troubles end though, because honestly, looking back, this team botched most of their other signings that took place during the offseason. At the time, it seemed as though this team loaded up when they signed players like Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, and Avery Bradley, but looking back, this might have been this team's biggest mistake. Some of the players signed seemed like they were actually meant to fill a role on this team's roster. Guys like Malik Monk in my eyes were actually good moves, because they can be outlet shooters for LeBron and Russ, but a lot of the other signings seemed like they had one thing in common, a big name wash veteran that doesn't really fit the team. Sure, some of these guys like Carmelo Anthony have been solid, but on the other hand, guys like DeAndre Jordan have been a horrible fit, and even saying that might just be an understatement. To put this in perspective, let's take a look at what the Golden State Warriors team did this offseason. Sure, they didn't get the biggest names in free agency, but everyone they did sign on a veteran minimum deal such as Nemanja Bjelica, Andre Iguodala, and Otto Porter Jr. all fit a role within this team perfectly, which is a big reason why the Warriors are on top of the West and the Lakers aren't. More importantly, the Warriors offseason acquisitions aren't nearly as old as the Lakers pickups, and no matter who the player is, age always plays a factor in how productive they are on the court. To put it simply, a lot of the Lakers signings just didn't pan out whether because of injury or not being a good fit. 
I believe that Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, and Malik Monk were solid, if not great for this team, but the rest of the signings were absolute fails by the Lakers so far this season. But even though this team's depth hasn't worked out, we have seen teams lacking a solid bench unit win in the past. That is, if their stars are actually able to stay healthy and be on the court. We may not even be having discussions on the Lakers' bad offseason if one thing was different, Anthony Davis being healthy and on the court dominating. Quite literally, Anthony Davis covers up a ton of the Lakers issues when he's on the court, but as you all know, Davis has been injured for a majority of the Lakers season, and well, after just returning from injury, he hurt his wrist yet again. The claim that Anthony Davis is made of glass, or AD stands for always damaged, is starting to look more and more like it's the truth, and in my eyes, the Lakers should be utterly terrified because of this. When the Lakers were a dominant team back in their championship run, most of it was because Anthony Davis was a defensive beast for this team down low, and he was also able to stretch the floor with his perimeter shots that he was hitting at an elite rate. Despite Davis clearly having both of these skills in his bag, even when he was on the court this year, he didn't show either of these traits. Davis has had a terrible season shooting the three ball, which I already discussed in my last video, so go tune into that if you haven't already. But just to recap, Davis not having a perimeter shot hinders the Lakers spacing in a big way, and the fact that he isn't defending like he used to makes him nothing more than a Carl Anthony Towns type player that doesn't even have a jumper. Now, that may have been a bit harsh, but even as a non-Laker fan, the Anthony Anthony Davis situation has been very, and when I say very, I mean very frustrating situation to watch. Draymond Green touched on this during his recent discussion on his podcast when he defended Russell Westbrook, saying, quote, You haven't really had the opportunity to see this team healthy, and how could they grow together healthy? And I also don't like how Russell Westbrook gets all the blame for everything going wrong. It is just not possible that one guy is to blame for everything going wrong. I will admit that Russ has been pretty bad for this team at times, but the fact that people are blaming everything on him is absolutely absurd at this point. Draymond is right, we haven't even seen this team when everyone is healthy yet, so why would you trade Russell Westbrook for someone like John Wall when the outcome will likely be the same or worse for this team this year? But even though the first two issues that I mentioned are the most talked about, we have to talk about the bigger picture, because I believe it shows what is truly going on with this team. But to do that, we have to go back. Back to the NBA bubble. When the Lakers were in the NBA bubble with their duo of Anthony Davis and LeBron, many believed that they were destined for a championship, but maybe not for the reason that you remember. Sure, Davis and LeBron were dominant on the offensive end, but at the time, the main attribute that made this Lakers team so good was their elite defense. During the NBA bubble, some would even go as far as saying that the Lakers were a defense first team. Between Anthony Davis protecting the paints, LeBron locking up anyone they put on him, and other great role player wing defenders, this team had everything they needed to be one of the best defensive teams in the league. But what about now? Well, if you have been watching the Lakers this season, you would know that they have been one of the worst defensive teams in the league this year, and it's not even close. Between Anthony Davis not being himself on that side of the ball, and the older role players who just aren't what they used to be on that side of the ball, the Lakers have been utterly terrible on the defensive side. As stated by Ricky O'Donnell in the Lakers article, it almost seems as though this team lost their identity of being a defense first team, and they didn't even have their identity in mind when making their offseason moves that ended up performing poorly. The Lakers won their championship in large part because of their defense, yet this team now has the 20th best defense in the league, which to say the least, is a big reason for their struggle. This may be an unpopular opinion. Opinion, but to me, a lot of what has happened should be blamed on LeBron James, but not LeBron on the courts. I'm talking about Lay GM. It is no secret that LeBron James has always been heavily involved with his team's offseason signings, trades, and basically everything that's happening with the team. Because of this, many believe LeBron is calling the shots for the Lakers and making all the decisions for this team, which at this point kind of makes sense. Going back to last offseason, it wouldn't exactly be the biggest shocker if LeBron pushed the front office to get big names such as Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, and and other similar players. In the mind of LeBron, he has been playing with and against these guys for years, so he knows what they're capable of. But what he probably didn't think about is how fast some players can fall off. Some of the guys that I mentioned literally just can't play defense for this team and aren't the best on offense either. <clears throat> DeAndre Jordan, and because of this, the Lakers are left with players who are pretty much useless, which is not what a championship team wants to have on their roster. To put it simply, the Lakers are in a tough spot. They could move THT or Kendrick Nunn to get a better defensive player, but honestly, this team will have to stick with what they have for the most part until the end of the season. If AD is healthy, this team has the chance to do big things, but at this point, the Lakers throwing blame at Russ and Frank Vogel is simply wrong, and if they move one or both of these guys, they'll realize that this is the case. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll catch you on the next one. One, what's out?